What's going on guys, Ryan O'Toole back here again, giving you guys another ranking. If you guys are new here, feel free to click that subscribe button and that bell notification icon for more reviews, reactions, rankings, and more movie content. With the release of Spider-Man No Way Home, the 27th movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, it's time for me to give you guys an updated ranking of all the Marvel Cinematic Universe movies from worst to best. I have not done this video since 2019, since Spider-Man Far From Home came out, and a lot of you guys have been asking me to do an updated one. Now that No Way Home came out this year, it's time to finally give you guys my updated ranking for every single movie. And just so you guys know, the shows will not be included in this ranking. That gets its own separate ranking. Be sure to let me know down below in the comments what your updated MCU ranking is. If you've seen Spider-Man No Way Home, if you haven't yet, leave your MCU ranking and let's have a great conversation down below in the comments. Keep in mind, this is my personal MCU ranking. These are my favorite films. This is my list. Know that going in. If you disagree with it, that's awesome. Let me know your list, but do it in a polite, respectful manner. No need for arguments, guys. This is just all film. So without further ado, let's begin. Iron Man 2 still comes in at the very bottom. For me, this has always been my least favorite MCU film out of all the sequels. This one did not stick the land in. Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man and Tony Stark comes off very unlikable in here. Gwyneth Paltrow, I would say, is the saving grace. We had a recasting of War Machine with Don Cheadle. I think Don Cheadle did a great job as Rhodey in here. Mickey Rourke as Whiplash is one of the worst villains in the MCU. It does have a saving grace performance with Sam Rockwell as Justin Hammer. But regardless, Iron Man 2 is the MCU film I rewatched the least, and it's always been my least favorite in the MCU. Thor The Dark World falls in that same line. This movie is very boring. For a very short movie, it should be very entertaining and awesome, but the movie just comes off like this Lord of the Rings bore fest. Thor just does, has no development at all in this film, and you have Loki in here, who's the saving grace, and Malekith is hands down the worst MCU villain. There are some fun, entertaining moments, good banters between Thor and Loki, but Kat Dennings in here is really boring, and I just don't love the love story with Natalie Portman and Chris Hemsworth. So overall, Thor The Dark World, definitely one of the worst MCU movies and not rewatchable at all. Captain Marvel had a lot of controversy going in because of Brie Larson's comment she made before the film. I don't hate Brie Larson at all, but I just think her as Captain Marvel just does not work. Carol Danvers is not a very likable character, and in this movie, it really shows. We do get a great origin story for Nick Fury. We find out how he loses his eye, which is pretty stupid. But you got the scrolls in here, who I thought were very interesting. Talos is very funny. Goose the cat is adorable, but the villain aspect in here from Jew Law is very underwhelming. Captain Marvel has some decent action sequences, but a very forgettable movie. This is the one I always don't look forward to rewatching. That's a really bad sign. This is a hot take right here. I know you guys are flaming in the comments right now, but I think Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 is bottom tier MCU. This is probably the most disappointing MCU film, mainly because I love the first film so much. I remember walking out of the first film loving it and going into Volume 2, I was really hyped and was really let down. This says some of the worst storytelling in the MCU in the most distasteful plot lines. Ego killing thousands of Star-Lord's brothers and sisters, Drax being an absolute joke box this entire movie, uh, in humiliating a child, like Guardians Volume 2 is just distasteful in my opinion. It's not absolutely awful, but it's definitely bottom tier MCU movie for me. Hey, what'd I miss? 
We were just tiny. And then in the Wasp was that one MCU movie that is this the eh, okay MCU movie. It's just the palate cleanser coming off of Infinity War. Nothing interesting at all happens in the movie except for the post credit sequence. I really like Paul Rudd. He's very charismatic as Ant-Man, but he has barely anything to do. It's mostly Evangeline Willie as the Wasp. She steals the entire show. Ghost is a pretty underwhelming villain, but I do like the actress in here. The main plot line pretty much is all the heroes and the villains coming together. They have the same exact goal and they decide to work together at the end, which just makes no sense for a conflict in my opinion. So Ant-Man and the Wasp is definitely one of my least favorite MCU movies, but let's hope Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania is even better because we're getting Kang the Conqueror. The Incredible Hulk. Now this is a one I don't go back and revisit a lot. For obvious reasons, Edward Norton is not the Hulk anymore. It's now Mark Ruffalo. I do like Edward Norton as Bruce Banner and the Hulk, but it just feels completely different now from the Hulk we have now. We're getting Tim Roth back as Abomination and She-Hulk, and we do have Thunderbolt Ross back, but The Incredible Hulk, you cannot watch this movie with every MCU marathon you do. You can completely skip this one, and it doesn't impact the entire universe. But I do like the fight sequences, especially the final battle with Hulk and Abomination. Abomination is an underrated villain, but nothing really eventful to the Incredible Hulk. I don't think it's awful. I do enjoy it when I watch it, but Tony Stark's end credit scene, that's what made it important. Eternals, if you ask me, this was probably my most anticipated MCU movie this year, mainly because of Chloe Zhao and her Oscar win for Nomadland. The cast is very exciting, but the whole movie is just really underwhelming and disappointing. I love the great cast they've assembled with Richard Madden, Gemma Chang, Kit Harington, Brian Tyree Henry, but the whole story is very jumbled and all over the place. Some of the Eternals are lied to pretty much their whole entire life, and the final battle sequence is like, huh? The Celestials too were a pretty disappointing presence in this movie, but I do really love the visual effects in here, and I do enjoy some of the Eternals, like Fastos, Brian Tyree Henry, but really doesn't give me any excitement if they do a sequel to the Eternals, which apparently maybe not because this is the first MCU movie to get a rotten score on Rotten Tomatoes. And is it earned? I don't think it's that bad, but it's not the greatest film in my opinion. Black Widow is definitely a film that didn't need to be made now. It should have been made 10 years ago after Iron Man 2. But I am satisfied we finally got a Black Widow movie and Scarlett Johansson got her own film and give us some closure to Natasha Romanoff. I do love Yelena. Florence Pugh does a great job. David Harbour and Rachel Weisz, they were pretty okay. Taskmaster is definitely one of the worst MCU villains. So yeah, overall, Black Widow, not the greatest MCU movie, and not the worst. It's mediocre. I will end this. Thor is probably one of the more underrated origin stories in the MCU. Kenneth Branagh directed this movie coming off of famous Romeo and Juliet films he's done in the past. And I think Kenneth Branagh does a solid job in here. Some of the best castings in the MCU are Chris Hemsworth and Tom Hiddleston as Thor and Loki. Thor pretty much starts off as an arrogant brat who learns to become a king and a better man, and Loki becomes one of the best MCU villains to date. And seeing Thor's transformation into king and battling Loki at the end was pretty cool to watch, and Anthony Hopkins as Odin is epic. Doctor Strange was 
a fine movie. I don't hate it, but I think it's overrated when I see it in people's top 10 or top 5 MCU. I don't think it's that great. I think the origin story is very similar to Iron Man and Thor. Uh, Doctor Strange is an arrogant guy who loses his hands and he has to learn to get them back. And he learns Sorcerer Supreme magic from the Ancient One, played by Tilda Swinton. And it's him becoming the character of Doctor Strange. While this definitely has the best visual effects in the entire MCU, the villains are very bad in here with Maz Mikkelsen. But overall, Doctor Strange becomes a way better character in other installments, but in his solo movie, pretty unlikable. <laughs> Spider-Man Homecoming is the starting film for Tom Holland's Spider-Man. Great introduction in Civil War, but in Homecoming, he pretty much is Iron Man Jr. in here. He has Tony Stark as his mentor, his father figure, and great with Robert Downey Jr., but I felt like he did kind of steal some certain spotlight from Spider-Man. I do really like that John Watts pretty much describes Spider-Man. What if he couldn't swing around, he just has to run around, and pretty much learns what the character of Spider-Man is. It's a Peter Parker movie for sure. But this does have one of the best villains in the MCU with the Vulture. Michael Keaton is great. I love just the reveal of him being Liz's father. That was definitely epic. He was a great villain. But Spider-Man Homecoming is pretty much a John Hughes movie and not one of my favorite films in the MCU. No strings on me. I do think Age of Ultron gets too much hate. I don't think it's bottom tier MCU but it is a step down from the other Avengers installments. I could see why, because after the first Avengers, the hype was this high and this one was fun, not great. Ultron is not a great MCU villain, but I do love the voice from James Spader, but I love Vision and Scarlet Witch's introductions. Paul Bettany and Elizabeth Olsen have then become great characters in the MCU. But Quicksilver, why would you introduce such an awesome new character and then just kill him off at the end? Hawkeye definitely gets the most development in here. Age of Ultron's a blast. I enjoy the Sokovia battle and the humor in this movie is freaking hilarious. With Vision picking up Thor's hammer, that was just funny. So yeah, Age of Ultron doesn't deserve the hate. It's fine, not great. Iron Man 3 isn't amazing, but I really enjoy Iron Man 3. I've enjoyed it more the more times I watch it. This is definitely a Shane Black movie, not an, like an MCU formulaic film. Shane Black adds his great humor and gives more background to Tony Stark as a character. And of course that Mandarin twist gets squashed with Shang-Chi. I do still think Aldrich Killian is one of the weakest MCU villains, but I do really enjoy Iron Man 3. It has great comedy, great action sequences, and a great exploration of Tony Stark as a character. Ant-Man was probably one of the biggest surprises in the MCU. A guy that turns into an ant and grows big as a superhero, that doesn't sound very exciting. But Ant-Man was a total blast. I would have loved if Edgar Wright directed this film, but I think Peyton Reed did a great job. Scott Lang is one of the more favorable and lovable MCU characters. I love the father-daughter relationship. I love Hank Pym. Michael Douglas is great. Evangeline Lilly's awesome. The action's great. Yellow Jacket's not the greatest MCU villain, but it's a really fun heist MCU film. So Ant-Man's one of the more rewatchable MCU movies, and it's really freaking funny. Rest in peace to Chadwick Boseman. I miss you to this day, man. Wakanda forever. Next is Black Panther. Now, Black Panther has gotten a lot of flack from people. A lot of people say it's overrated. I don't agree that it's overrated, but it has gone down a little bit on my ranking, but I still really enjoy Black Panther. Wakanda is one of the greatest locations in the entire universe. I love just the cultural impact this movie had. 
in exploring more of T'Challa's story, Chadwick Boseman is perfectly cast as the character. But Michael B. Jordan as Killmonger, one of the most personal revenge stories, greatest villains in the MCU. I love just Killmonger as a character. And all the badass women of Wakanda. You got Shuri, Okoye, and Nakia in the Dora Milaje. I freaking love those group of women. Does it have questionable CG? Absolutely. The final battle is not the greatest. But Black Panther is just badass. I love Black Panther. You don't want any part of this. Far From Home is probably one of the most entertaining MCU movies. Introduce Mysterio, Jake Gyllenhaal, one of the greatest MCU villains. I love Mysterio. All his dream sequences are amazing. The way he manipulates Peter Parker in here is awesome. And exploring more of Spider-Man and Peter Parker in here. He just wants to be a normal kid. He wants to enjoy his vacation. But of course Nick Fury is calling him in to help Mysterio fight off the elementals. Then he gets completely manipulated by Mysterio. The final battle, of course, leads up to the great ending, of course, of Spider-Man's identity revealed, and then we got No Way Home after. It's just great. The ending is amazing. J. Jonah Jameson's cameo is one of the best I've seen. Number 11 is Captain America, the first Avenger. One of the best solo origin stories in the MCU. I love Captain America. He's my favorite of the MCU heroes. Chris Evans is so great as the character and a great origin story of Steve Rogers, one of the most likable characters in the MCU. A skinny kid from Brooklyn becoming Captain America is awesome and Haley Atwell as Peggy Carter is such a badass and I love the love story with those characters. The Red Skull, I get some of the hate, but I love Red Skull. Hugo Weaving's great. The action sequences are so old style and awesome. And First Avenger gets progressively better through age because of stuff like Endgame and the What If series. It's become more better. I really love Thor Ragnarok. I can't wait for Love and Thunder. Taika Waititi saved Thor, guys. He really transformed Thor as a character. From a really boring Avenger to a really awesome Avenger. And it explores Thor's character a lot more, making him understand all the shit that's come his way. Loki really hasn't done much. Odin's death and he has to deal with his sister Hela. Kate Blanchett is awesome. And just the comedy really works in here. Is there way too much comedy? For sure, but that didn't really bother me. And of course, Valkyrie. Tessa Thompson is awesome as Valkyrie. And it's just the comedy, the world Taika Waititi brought us into, the colorful aspects. That final Led Zeppelin immigrant song always gets me going. Who are you? This movie knocked my socks off with the Kung Fu. I loved Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. If you ask me, this was probably my least anticipated MCU film this year because I know nothing about Shang-Chi as a character, never read him in the comics, and this is one of the best solo films in the MCU. Simu Liu is such a badass. I love him as Shang-Chi. The martial arts are so freaking good in this movie. That bus sequence is awesome. That skyscraper fight in the first act is great. And it introduces a badass villain in the MCU with Wen Wu or the Mandarin. Tony Leung is so great as that character. He's so intimidating to watch. And all the new characters too. You got Aquafina, you have Shang-Chi's sister, Zaylin. And Destin Daniel Creighton knocked his socks off directing this movie. I cannot wait for the sequel and that Disney Plus series that is coming out from Creighton. Iron Man, directed by Jon Favreau. Robert Downey Jr. as Tony Stark. 
like if Robert Downey Jr. was never cast as Iron Man, I don't think we would have had an MCU. The character study of Tony Stark Iron Man is one of the most groundbreaking in the MCU. The way he gets captured by the terrorists, becomes Iron Man, and fights off Obadiah Stane is always epic to watch. I love the first Iron Man. The third act isn't the greatest, but I can forgive it. Iron Man is definitely top tier MCU. At number seven is Spider-Man No Way Home. My review is out on the channel. You guys can go check it out. I was really impressed with No Way Home, guys. This delivered on all the hype. This movie is a great representation of three generations of Spider-Man, all combined into one. Tom Holland as Spider-Man in here he has defined he's my favorite Spider-Man. Tom Holland is so great in this movie, guys. You'll be blown away with his performance in here. And just the exploration and the darkness of this movie is so epic is one of the best theater experiences I've ever had in the, this year, definitely. I was blown away. Great fan service, great action. No Way Home delivers on all the hype. The Avengers. This was probably the biggest monumental film back in the day. Joss Whedon did a great job directing this movie and all these iconic Marvel heroes coming together after their movies to accomplish one mission, defeating the Chitauri army and Loki. The Battle of New York will remain one of the greatest final battles in the MCU. Seeing Iron Man, Captain America, Thor, Hulk, Black Widow, and Hawkeye all together in New York battling against Loki is really awesome. I mean, what more else can you say about the Avengers? It's epic! the guardians of the galaxy what a bunch of a-holes this was the biggest surprise to me in the mcu when they announced this movie back in the day i was not excited at all a talking tree and a talking raccoon that sounded really dumb but this movie slaps, man. Guardians of the Galaxy is still as awesome to this day. I love all these characters. Some of the greatest, most entertaining characters. I love Rocket. He's probably my favorite of the Guardians. And Groot. Drax was awesome in this movie, not in Volume 2. This was the Drax I wanted in Volume 2. But Guardians 1 is awesome. James Gunn's direction is fantastic. Civil War kicks ass. I love Civil War to this day. Team Cap, Team Iron Man, I'm Team Cap all the way. I just love, this is an Avengers movie and a Captain America film. Seeing them all battle at the airport still is entertaining to this day. Seeing Giant Man, Captain America, Iron Man, Black Panther, Spider-Man thrown into the battle as well. And you got Zemo, one of the best MCU villains and Civil War is still impactful to this day. Many MCU fans remember how great this film was, just like I do, and the Russo brothers, they do some of the best MCU films. I remember when I first saw this movie in theaters, I was absolutely blown away that I started talking about movies on Facebook. I thank this movie right here. I wouldn't have had my YouTube channel if it wasn't for Winter Soldier. Still my favorite solo film in the MCU. It's still my, one of the most groundbreaking films I've seen. Winter Soldier was so badass, it took Captain America in a completely different direction, becoming the forefront of the MCU. The Hydra twist is still mind blowing. Winter Soldier, such a badass villain. And Robert Redford, one of the greatest classic actors, making him one of the best MCU villains. That's top tier. The Russo Brothers first MCU movie is still a banger. Winter Soldier's badass, it's impactful, and it's still watchable to this day. Infinity War is still probably a lot of people's favorite MCU movie, and understandably so. 
But Infinity War was just so dark and so epic. When this movie came out, everybody was still shocked to this day by that ending. And the ending was so great seeing Thanos win at the end. And Thanos made this movie great. Josh Brolin did a great job. Thanos was a force to be reckoned with in this film. And seeing the Avengers lose is something different for the MCU. And seeing all these characters in different teams were perfect. My favorite parent was probably Doctor Strange and Tony Stark. That still is hilarious. Doctor Strange, it took a character I wasn't a big fan of and made him one of my favorite heroes. So, all around, Infinity War was such an epic we've all been waiting for for 10 years. And it paid off. And it has the best ending in the MCU. Like, the darkest ending. It's still awesome. Avengers Endgame is still my favorite MCU movie. That could change, but Endgame was the payoff that I've been waiting for. This is how you do fan service. Rise of Skywalker, take notes. I understand people's criticisms with this movie, but I don't agree with it. I still really love this movie a lot. I love the time travel aspects. Love Fat Thor. I know people don't like Fat Thor and Professor Hulk, but I think they're great. And Endgame has the best third act in the entire MCU. That will never change. Like, everything in Endgame's final third act is completely epic and awesome. The portals is something we will all remember forever. Maybe it'll change, but Endgame is still my number one. I love you 3000. There you have it, guys. That was my ranking for all 27 movies in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Thank goodness I'm done. What did you guys think of my ranking? I'm sure you disagree with it. Let me know your ranking down below, and respectfully... Let's have a dialogue. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. All my social media links are in the description below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.